everyone. It's time for Hearts and Crafts with Anna. I'm Anna. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. If you've visited before, it's good to see you again. On this channel, we share shopping hauls, create budget-friendly DIYs, and home decor. In today's video, I'm taking part in the Small Creator Sunday Spooky Season Challenge. It's hosted by Tiffany from Brothero Aesthetic. And her co-host is Ariel from Peace of Refuge. Their channels along with the playlist are linked in the description below. Please make sure and stop by and watch this playlist. It really helps us smaller channels to grow. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment, share, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video and you don't miss out on any of the fun. Now let's head on over to my craft room so I can show you what I made using one of these, some of this, and these. Grab your coffee, your favorite beverage, and come on, meet me in my craft room. Let's go. Vamonos! For DIY number one, I'm using this wicked wood cutout from the Dollar Tree. I'm using these paints, green, orange, and black. And I will be using my chalk marker. I started by painting the hat and the broom black. Once the entire sign was painted, I went over it with a second coat of paint and painted the back black. Next, I painted the moon orange and then I mixed the green and the black paints to make a Wicked Witch green and painted the word Wicked. See? Wicked, huh? Next, I wrote the word open on the moon in pencil and the words spells, potions, brews on the broomstick, then I went over them with my chalk marker. Next, I outlined the witch's hat and broom with my white chalk marker, and then I outlined the moon and the word wicked with my black Sharpie. I added some black yarn for hanging and oh, stay tuned for the reveal. For DIY number two, I'm using one of these styrofoam Halloween pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. Some of this knit fabric that I picked up at Walmart. A scarf from the Dollar Tree. And these witchy poo leggings that were left over from a previous DIY. I'm going to be using some scrap felt. Some of these jewels from the Dollar Tree. And this witchy poo booty cutout that I made as a template. I'm also going to be using this witchy poo hat that my daughter bought for me at Target. Isn't it cute? I love it. One of these witch brooms that come in a set of three from the Dollar Tree. Some of this ribbon because every witchy poo needs her cat. Some chenille stems. 
and I'm going to be using these styrofoam balls. Now, I might change my mind on this because we all know that these styrofoam balls make a big mess. Oh yes, and don't forget the coffee. Join me for a cup, won't you? Cheers. I started by cutting a hole at the top of the pumpkin. Next, I cut the fabric into a 10 inch by 24 inch piece and started wrapping it around the pumpkin. I pulled the ends towards the center of the pumpkin, pushing them in through the hole and securing the fabric in place with hot glue. Once I had the ends in place, I went around to the opposite sides and sealed up the seams. I lined up the stripes as best as I could, took the excess fabric, folded it into corners, and secured them underneath the pumpkin. Next, I took a 3 inch by 20 inch piece of fabric and wrapped it around the pumpkin to cover up the seams. Next, I went around and lined up the fabric with the stripes. Ah, everything's aligned. Next, I used the black chenille stems to make the grooves on the pumpkin. I made a total of six grooves. Next, I took the stockings and sealed one end with hot glue, leaving about an inch on the bottom. Once I had the bottom sealed, I added some more hot glue and pinched the ends together so that the stockings would sag in her boots, because witches have skinny legs, you know. And now for the fun part, but actually this did not make as big as a mess as I thought it would. I used my funnel to pour the styrofoam balls into the stocking and then I used the witch's broom to push the styrofoam balls through the funnel. Once I had the styrofoam balls in the stocking, I sealed the stockings leaving about two inches at the top. I am having so much fun making this and I can't wait for you to see the end result.
Next, I took my boot cut out and made the witch's boots using the purple felt. Then I took my purple gem strips and my gold gem strips and decorated the boots. I used the purple gem strips to outline the boots and I used the gold gem strips for the buckle. Now those are some fancy high-end boots, for a fancy witch I suppose. Next I attach the boots to the stockings. Ready for a night out with the witches. Next I cut an 8 inch by 8 inch square piece from the scarf and attached it to the pumpkin for the witch's cape. Ooh, let's see how it flows when she flies. Next, I used a witch stitch to hem the cape to prevent it from fraying. Next, I removed the existing ribbon from the broom. I cut an 8 inch strip of the pink cat ribbon, dovetailed the ends, pinched it in the center, and then twist tied it with a chenille stem. And I attached that ribbon to the broom. So pretty. Doesn't it make you want to fly? Next, I took some floral wire and made two floral pins to attach the hat to the pumpkin. I slipped the pins through the loops on the hat and then poked the pins into the pumpkin. I didn't want to use hot glue for this hat because I may want to borrow it someday. Next, I attached the legs to the pumpkin. Next, I attached the broom. Ooh, googly eyes. Next, her eyes. 
Did you notice they match her stockings? I'm going to give her a purple gem right below her right eye. After all, she is a little bougie. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I really like how this Wicked Potions and More storefront sign turned out. It was super fun and easy to make and of course very budget friendly. But this little witchy poo over here, she is tending the store right now, but she's ready to go kick up her heels once her shift is over. I want to thank Tiffany from Broke Girl Aesthetic and her co-host Ariel from Peace of Refuge for hosting this fun Halloween challenge. Don't go away. DIY number three is next. For DIY number three, I'm using this 14 inch wire wreath form some deco mesh, some ribbon, some chenille stems, and this adorable Halloween decor hanger. She's from the Dollar Tree. Isn't she cute? I started by twist tying 12 of the chenille stems onto the wreath form. You want to attach one at each of the crossbars and then one in the middle, in the middle two rows between the crossbars for a total of 12. Six on the outside and six on the inside. Next, I took my mesh, left about a two inch tail, pinched it in the center and twist tied it into one of the outside chenille stems. Then I measured out 10 inches of mesh pinched it in the center and twist tied it into the next outside chenille stem. Then again, I measured out 10 inches of mesh, pinched it in the center and twist tied it into the next outside chenille stem. I did this all the way around until I came back to my starting point. Once I came back to my starting point, I measured out 10 inches of mesh, pinched it in the center, and then I opened or untied the very first chenille stem. I attached the last poof and twist tied the chenille stem again. Then I measured out six inches of mesh pinched it in the center and twist tied it into the very first chenille stem on the inside row. Then I measured 10 inches, pinched it in the center and attached it to the next chenille stem in that second row. And I did this all the way around till I came back to my starting point. Once I got to my starting point, I measured 10 inches of mesh, pinched it in the center, I untied the chenille stem, attached the last poof, and once I had it securely in place, I cut the mesh, leaving about a two inch tail. Next, I went around the frame, fluffing up the poofs. Next, I took the purple and black mesh and cut 12 8 inch strips of each color.
Once I had them all cut, I rolled them all up, took one of each color, pinched them together in the center, untied the chenille stems, and attached a set to each one of the chenille stems. And here I'm showing you how I rolled them up. The strips that were cut at the end of the roll are tighter than the strips that are cut at the beginning of the roll. So sometimes you do have to re-roll them. And here's the base with all the mesh in place. Isn't it pretty? Next, I cut 12 8 inch strips of each of the ribbons. Once I had all the strips cut, I folded the ribbon in half lengthwise and dovetailed the ends. This ribbon is pretty thin so here I am cutting three at a time. Next I took one of each of the ribbons, crisscrossed them, pinched them in the center fan them out and then attach them to each one of the twist ties. Once all the ribbon tails were in place, I curled the chenille stems by wrapping them around a glue stick. This gives the wreath an added element of fun without having to tuck the stems away. Aren't those fun? Next I attached the chenille stems to the decor piece using hot glue and then I twist tied it onto the wreath. I added a piece of cardboard to secure the chenille stems in place. I poked the chenille stems through the mesh and twist tied them behind the frame. So cute. 
Once everything was in place, I went around the wreath and fluff, fluff, fluffed. Well, this little witch is ready for some Halloween fun. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to watch the rest of the Small Creator Sunday Spooky Season Challenge. The playlist is linked below. Thank you for watching and subscribing. I'll see you in my next video. Happy Halloween. Bye.